Excuse me for not being an amazing storyteller, but this is definitely a true story. Not me specifically, but my mother used to work at a hotel in Washington, D.C. back in the 90s as a housekeeper slash maid. She needed money because she was a refugee from Vietnam. Even though she didn't know much English at the time, she knew enough to get by at her job, and all the other staff and hotel guests loved her because of how sweet she was. Because of this, any time high-profile guests stayed at the hotel, such as the Backstreet Boys, the manager always sent my mom to clean the room since she was so good at it. Anyway, one day, a guest comes in. We'll refer to him as Mr. M because I don't know his real name. He checked into their most expensive suite. As usual, the manager told my mom to take care of his room. As she got there, there was a do not disturb sign, so she told the manager she would come back later. What was weird was that no one was ever allowed in his room. The man stayed there for over a month, and not one time did he let a staff member come in to clean it. However, he paid a lot, and he gave a warm welcome every time he passed a staff member housekeeper, so no one paid him any attention. Then, one day, people didn't see him anymore, so they assumed he checked out. Even though the receptionist had no account of this, since it had been so long since the room was cleaned, and the Do Not Disturb sign wasn't on the door anymore, the manager told my mom to go check it out and try and clean up what she could. As she got to the floor and unlocked the door to the room, a disturbing smell hit her. She couldn't figure out what it was, but she continued to survey the room, which was disgustingly messy. Her words were that it looked like someone had thrown a rave, even though no other guests seemed to have ever gone into the room besides Mr. M. It had looked like Mr. M had deserted the place without telling anyone. My mom was still shocked by the smell, so she tried to track it down. As she followed the smell, she could tell it was coming from the hotel room closet. When she opened the closet door, there was nothing but a cardboard box on the ground from which to smell. My mother's first instinct was to open the box to see what it was and clean it or throw it out. When she opened the box, what she saw scared her to this day. It was the rotting, decomposing head of a young woman, chopped off. My mother immediately screamed and got out of there, where she fainted in the elevator. Once she woke up, cops were everywhere, and the hotel was like a CSI scene. The manager told her that Mr. M wasn't his real name, and he used a fake credit card to check in. The head of the woman was identified to be like a, a sex worker. I don't know much more any nitty gritty details, but I'm sure one can look it up on the internet for more information. Needless to say, my mom quit that day. A Most Strange Guest by Loco Mojo I've come to realize through my two years as a night auditor that the things that shake you the most are not the weird noises you hear or the overwhelming feelings of loneliness at 3 a.m. The stuff that really gets to you simply being things that your guests do. There have been a few good incidents that have shaken me a bit over my tenure. An intoxicated man waving his gun around at 3 a.m. A woman having a schizophrenic breakdown in a room and having a violent dispute with herself and a man wandering the halls talking to himself for hours on end. I can remember one that struck me as extremely odd. One night, a few hours after I had arrived for my shift, a guest kept coming down and aimlessly wandering around the lobby and breakfast area. He was doing extremely odd things like talking to himself and sitting down at a breakfast table only to stand up and switch chairs at the same table every two to three minutes. Every time I asked him if he needed help, he would jerk a little and mumble that he didn't need anything. Well, a few hours or so after he finally went to his room, he came back down and said he had turned the heater on and it made him short of breath and needed me to call an ambulance. So even though I was confused, I obliged. About a minute later, the hotel's fire alarm started to go off. The whole time, the firemen were going up and down from his room. They kept asking if he had anyone with him, or if he was alone. And I kept telling them that he was in fact alone. He had no other guests in the room with him. After the firemen left, and everything was back to quote-unquote normal, I went to look in the man's room. He had rearranged all the furniture. 
put the TV in the bathroom and had put his trash can in the middle of the room and set it on fire. The thing that troubled me wasn't the fact that the man had intentionally set his room on fire and could possibly have burned down the hotel, but it was the fact that even though he was all alone, he had small children's clothes spread around the room. Packed lift from a former Redditor. Got onto a lift from the top floor to head down. Lift stopped at fourth floor. Door opened. Saw people outside standing still, making no attempt to come in despite me being alone inside. And there was room for them. The automatic lift door then closed, and before it was completely shut, I heard someone outside say, Why is a lift so full of people? a few months ago at a more upscale place. It was a quiet evening and a distraught looking guy came to the bar and ordered a shot and a beer. I was catching some kind of messed up vibes off. To lighten the mood, I tried to drum up some lighthearted conversation. He tried to talk, but couldn't, so I asked him if everything was alright. He shook his head, saying no. I asked what was wrong. Anything I can do to help? How about a plate of some food on the house, buddy? He declines, proceeds to tell me the escort he hired slit her wrists and is a, a corpse in the hotel room's bathroom. I jumped back and was like, holy F, I'm calling 911. After calling 911, I ran back to the bar to find the man slumped on the bar, not moving. I run over to check on him and his pulse is weak and he is pale and cold. After the police and medics arrived and cleaned up the mess, there was the man's end of life note found in the room by another guest a few days later, yep, a few days later, that said he wanted to feel a woman's touch one more time before ODing on something that killed him at my bar. It was really, really effed up. I got a week off of work for the deal, and I was shocked when I came back to find everything normal, like nothing ever happened. Doppelganger Confusion by Infinity Girl Several years ago, my college roommate, let's call her E, worked as the night manager for a newly built hotel. As was par for the course, I would often bring coffee in around 1 to 2 a.m. and chat for a while. One night, I showed up to find E sitting at the front desk, shaking her head, looking completely perplexed. Allegedly, she had just checked in what could only be described as the doppelganger of our other roommate, M who was alike down to the same height, hairstyle, eye color, and southern accent, which was pretty odd as we live in the north. E tried to speak with the new guest and show her a picture of M on her phone, but was rebuffed several times. We both chalked it up to coincidence as we knew M was visiting her parents, and we went on to enjoy our coffee. Shortly after 2, I decided to head home. And it wasn't until around 2.30 when I pulled into our garage that I checked my phone to see a series of texts from E to M and me at 2.17 a.m. Stop. Not funny. You guys suck. What the hell? Naturally, I was confused and called her back. This is when things got weird and E sounded hysterical on the phone. Apparently, M and I, in the same clothes I wore earlier, had been standing at the end of the main hallway staring at her. E thought this was a joke and kept calling out to no response. Eventually, the front desk phone rang, and in the time it took to answer it, we both had disappeared. I calmed her down over the phone, and the next morning we talked through the possibilities, trying to rationalize what she saw. The guest who looked like M did come back to the front desk later that morning to inquire about some services, and much to E's surprise, looked only vaguely similar to our roommate. The only thing that scares me to this day, and that I never told her, is that when I got into our house, the kitchen clock was stuck on 217, and directly next to it sat a photo of M and I smiling that I had only developed that afternoon. Still, no explanations and nothing weird ever happened at the hotel again, but it still makes me uneasy to this day. <laughs>